The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Okay. Uh, time for our last presenter of the day, who uh, uh, Luke Snell, who needs no introduction. Uh, he's a con concrete consultant, uh, emeritus professor at Southern Illinois University at Eddysville. Uh, he's done extensive consulting work in construction and concrete problems throughout the U.S. and internationally. Um, he is the uh, former chair of uh, uh, ACI 120 History of Concrete. Uh, relinquished that, handed that over uh, in the spring. And so, please welcome Luke up to talk about the history of the hard hat. Well, the hard hat really started to become uh, on our job sites in about the 1920s when we started doing it. But before that, the hard hat was basically considered unmanly. And we're talking basically about only men being in the industry anyway. Construction is tough. The weak die, the strong continue on. And if you wore a hard hat, you were actually admitting that you were afraid. You didn't really belong in construction. And probably many of you have seen this or many other types of this. You'll see this many times in construction and engineering offices. Uh, as you will notice, these guys are up there playing the harmonica. Uh, uh, perching themselves up there, obviously wearing no hard hats. You'll see other pictures of guys sleeping on the highest possible beams on the construction site, and many of them also uh, drinking as well, just to show that they are in control, they're not afraid. Well, the hard hat basically started to come through the military. So we have many examples of that. You'll see, and this goes back into uh, ancient times, here is a, a Greek hat, a Celtic parade hat, probably uh, only used in parades, as, we, as it does say in there, uh, not something that would be very functional. I spent a lot of time working over in Mongolia, so I had to include a Mongolian hat. Uh, but the Mongolian hat also has some other parts to it, uh, they would actually tie horsehair. If you know anything about Mongolia, the hordes coming out there, establishing the largest empire that uh, ever existed in the world. But what they would do is tie the horsehair there. So if you can see these type of guys galloping at you with their hard hats on, their helmets on, and the, uh, just picture the horse hairs sticking in the back, it would bring a lot of fear. Here's one from the Ottoman Empire, and I find this one very unique. It's probably one of the first instances that they were doing something that would resemble safety glasses. And you can see there's some, some protection there for the eyes in that type of helmet. Well, after World War I, we had a surplus of hard hats, really helmets. And one company whose son went over uh, and was involved in World War I, uh, was inspired that this might be something that they would want to get into. They were already making uh, uh, kind of a hat helmet, if you will, for those that were in the mining industry. And just maybe someone would capture this idea and this would make some money for them, as, uh, as, and this becomes a developing market. Here is a picture of one of the hard hats, helmets that the Marines wore. And again, obviously, this is a military application. So the first manufactured hard hat that we can find, by the way, there's some dispute on this. Decker, which is writes a lot of uh, business types of books, said there was one over in the uh, Southeast Asia, but no one can find any records on it. That's the only instance that someone has referred to it, so I I'm gonna discount that one. 
Uh, the first manufactured one was in 1919, and it was called the uh, Hard Boiled Hat, made of canvas, glue, and black paint. And that's what it looks like. And uh, you'll see this idea, it gets inspired uh, on some other projects that are very near and dear to our hearts that are in the concrete industry. But basically, in my mind, they look like two baseball caps that have been put together and smeared with some type of, of material. Well, this same company, Bullion Company, uh, was approached by the U.S. Navy. And they were, uh, for the shipping yards, they had a lot of overhead work that was going on, and they wanted to be able to protect the people that were doing the loading and unloading. And there's some write-ups on this talking about the seagulls dropping stuff on the workers, and that's what one of the reasons they were inspired. If you've been around seagulls and if you think about them flying overhead, uh, I think by saying stuff, you can kind of get an idea uh, of the plight way of saying that. So they went ahead and purchased a bunch of these hard-boiled hats for the workers on the job site. And evidently it worked. Uh, there's no nothing indication on that. Now, if you go back to some of the other instances that were happening about this same time, linemen that were working on overhead poles were sick and tired of things dropping on their heads. So they made their own hard hat. It's really not a hard hat. What they did is just stuff newspapers into their uh, uh, hats. And so if something fell on them, as long as it was, wasn't too big, uh, it would provide some type of protection for them as they were working. So uh, again, uh, and what I want you to capture here is much of this is being controlled by the workers, not coming down from management. Uh, the first instance that I could find that, you know, where we could truly say someone was trying to do this on the construction was the electrical union uh, uh, saying that they needed to have some type of protection as they were building the post office in Boston. And uh, as you would imagine, and some of you will remember the old cartoons where they're throwing the hot rivets and the guys catching them. Of course, they're all cartoon ca uh, characters uh, where this was happening. And if you imagine those hot rivets being thrown around on the job site, falling down on an uninspected worker, that would be pretty devastating. Uh, so what they did is buy a bunch of the surplus uh, World War I helmets and use that as protection to, for singed hairs and, and for objects falling on them. And I think this really represents the first use of hard hats on a construction site. And you can say maybe the uh, telephone workers, uh, that might be as well. 1931, 1935, the Hoover Dam was being constructed. And the high scalers in particular were, were uh, working uh, with a lot of uh, objects being uh, falling uh, during their construction. For those who are not familiar with the word high scalers, these are the type of guys that would come down from a suspended uh, uh, little seat that they were sitting on from the top, coming down the cliffs and knocking down all of the loose rocks that uh, were uh, as part of the cliffs so that they could anchor the Hoover Dam into that uh, particular area. So number one, uh, they had a jackhammer there and the rocks were obviously falling all the time and there was many of them working on that. So what they decided to do because they had no protection is they made their own hard hat and they followed the one. What they did is take two baseball caps, put the tar on them and 
temperatures in that area, especially when this work was going on, it got into 120 degrees in that particular area. So they baked them in the sun and they had some protection. It was basically the same as the one that was being manufactured uh, previously to that. And there's one instance that is recorded that the high scaler was hit so hard by a falling object on, on him that it broke his jaw, but it saved his skull. So uh, evidently it really worked. And the company was so impressed by this that they decided we got to do this. Now, again, the last few instances was all controlled by the workers. You can see an attitude shift from being afraid uh, to wear a hard hat to the necessity of wearing a hard hat because of the construction going on, and it's been controlled by the workers. And if you look at the picture here, uh, you can see some of the construction going on there, and on the right-hand side of that picture, you can see the hard hats are now being worn. These are more or less the professional hard hats that you and I are seeing, and you can see there's two styles there. There's one that represents the military helmet, and then you can see one that's a little bit closer to the hard hat that you and I would recognize. Now, the whole crews are now wearing the hard hats. And here's an example of, of the, some of the uh, workers there placing the concrete. The first project where the hard hats were mandated from the start of the job was the Golden Gate Bridge. And uh, the chief engineer wanted to have a safe project. Now we're starting to get management deeper involved in the process. And so uh, they mandated hard hats and safety helmets, or safety nets, excuse me. And here are some examples of them. You can see, again, much of the hard hats are uh, still representing a lot of the military uh, ones there, and you can see uh, the safety nets that are uh, uh, there, the Golden Gate going, uh, near San Francisco. Well, the hard hat, uh, obviously wear it. It's got to be comfortable. So they started to try to make them lighter, more comfortable, liners in them and things like that. One of the first innovations uh, came across uh, from mil uh, moving away from the military type was to use the aluminum hard hat. Obviously, if you're an electrical worker, that's the last thing you want to be wearing is an aluminum hard hat. It conducts electricity. And they are still available today. And here is an example of the aluminum hard hat. Now most of our hard hats are made with thermoplastics. They're lightweight, relatively comfortable to wear. And we even have color codes that are on our job sites. And you can see the white. These are the guys that are supposed to be making the, the decisions. So we wear the white hats, the managers and the engineers. The yellow hard hats representing uh, general workers. And you can read the rest of those. Uh, I'm not seeing this as much as I used to. Uh, I don't think the color scheme is as prevalent as it used to be. I think hard hats are just there, and I see a lot of people just wearing white hard hats. For site visitors, they would many times have a different colored hard hat. This particular one calls out a, the gray one. That is to alert everybody that's on the job site, keep an eye on that person. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's not one of us. He's going to get himself into danger, so try to keep him out of danger. So the hard hat. The interesting thing, I had a great hard hat. So I'm, I'm not sure I, I, I like that analogy, but that's what it is. Many <laughs> job sites would have a pink hard hat, and that would be for the person who forgot their hard hat and Here's your pink hard hat, and everybody could giggle and laugh and point at the guy and all this type of stuff uh, as a member, uh, way of showing uh, this person doesn't have their act together. Well, as things change, and now we have some women-owned companies, the hard hat, uh, pink hard hat, may be a symbol of pride. 
And we see some of that going on now in our uh, businesses. And uh, as we go into uh, uh, breast cancer awareness time, wearing the pink heart hats to show the support of people that are in that. Well, the hard hat has come a long, long ways. And it, it continues to develop. And matter of fact, there was just an article about two weeks ago talking about the hard hat. Now, again, we got to recognize that things in other parts of the world are a little bit different. If you go into the Asian, you will see most of the people will have the straps that connect under the chin. I don't see that very often in the U.S. So if you are to fall, the first thing that's going to fall off your head, maybe before the accident is complete, is your hard hat. And thus, you have lost your protection. So a new hard hat has come out and is, was announced in concrete construction. And this is resembling, for those of you who bicycle, this is resembling the bicycling helmet. Fastens under the chin, has some uh, additional benefits in that you can, it's got little vents on it, so in the summertime you can open up those vents and you get some uh, ventilation, um, or in the wintertime you can close it and hold the heat in. And obviously that is going to stay on your head regardless of what type of accident you are getting yourself into. And uh, the only problem with that is a hard hat costs 20, what, 20, 30 dollars? This one costs over a hundred dollars. So is it worth it? Well, if you have some construction accidents, it's probably a cheap, cheap investment. Our hard hats, uh-huh, this type? Very good. I'm, very good. That's a good testimony for those, uh, for the recording. Uh, there was a question that there's a company there that's already using these type of hard hats, and that's a very good, uh, scheme. Uh, I saw some old advertisements on this where the guy, uh, a, a good looking guy dressed in a suit wearing a hard hat in the laps of a lady. Um, and of course they're trying to show that the hard hat, you know, it's a social thing. Uh, probably not the best place to show this type of uh, thing, but uh, is the hard hat a, a symbol or fashion statement? Well, maybe so. And if you are a graduate of Arizona State University uh, construction management program, at their commencement, they wear their hard hat. And... The interesting thing is, when the newspapers show up, who are they going to take a picture of? So just about every time they have commencement, you see this type of picture going on, that the hard hats are being used to show uh, academic achievement for the students. And for those of you who are uh, involved in construction management, maybe you can start doing something along that line as well. Trying to take you through a little bit of the history of the hard hat. Hard hat has come a long ways, and uh, the whole idea, we have moved by the workers from a uh, hard hat showing that you are fearful to the workers saying we got to do something to protect ourselves to management finally catching up that hard hats are important and uh, companies that are moving forward uh, on some of the newer uh, uh, developments of the hard hat. This is a very, very encouraging. I thank you.